When people talk about oil and gas industry, one of the two probably comes to your mind. First are the oil wells, and the second one are the gas stations that you go to get your gasoline for your cars. However, oil and gas businesses are far more complex than that. It is a trillion dollar industry, and we all rely on it in our daily lives. Today, I want to give you a high level overview of how oil and gas industry is structured. Before digging into the industry, I want to give you a little background on what is oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquid. What is oil? Oil is a fossil fuel. Most of the oil extracted today has been formed from prehistoric organisms whose remains settled at the bottom of oceans and lakes millions of years ago. As layers of sediment cover them, the pressure on them increase, which in turn increase the temperature. This process changed their chemical composition, eventually transforming them into oil. What is natural gas? Natural gas, like crude oil, is a mixture of hydrocarbons, which is primarily found in gaseous or vapor state at atmospheric conditions. The main component of natural gas is methane. Methane is the main constituent of pipeline quality gas, representing upwards of 90% of natural gas. What is natural gas liquid? Natural gas liquids are valuable hydrocarbons that are usually found associated with natural gas or that can be refined from oil. Why are they called NGLs then? They're called NGLs because these hydrocarbons are found in the gaseous state at atmospheric conditions, but can be converted into liquid by either increasing the pressure, decreasing the temperature, or both. The oil and gas industry is traditionally divided into three distinct sectors, upstream, midstream, and downstream. Now some companies are also called integrated, this means that the company is involved in business in two or more of the three sectors. An example of this will be ExxonMobil, which I think all of us are familiar with. Upstream sector is also known as the exploration and production sector. Companies in this sector goes out to find suitable locations, both onshore and offshore, that can contain oil and gas. They will set up their wells to gather and process oil once they identify the location and typically sell to midstream or downstream companies at a terminal, gas plant, refinery, or other delivery points. Some of the best locations that you can find onshore are those landscapes that were once under the sea. They typically contain a huge amount of oil and gas. For example, the Permian Basin that crosses northwestern Texas all the way to southeastern New Mexico is one of the best locations that we have in the states and it was once under the sea. A popular offshore location around the uh, states is Gulf of Mexico. However, offshore exploration causes a lot more compared to the onshore ones because everything just causes a lot more if you want to do all these process in the sea. Profit margin is higher in this sector compared to midstream and downstream, but at the same time, the risks are also higher. Risks are higher because it's possible that the oil reservoir they discover from drilling is not big enough to cover the amount of costs that it took to drill and discover that oil reservoir. Also, this is the most politic impact sector out of the three globally politics can get very complicated. For example, here in the US, there's always a politician side who's against fossil fuel because of the carbon emission. So they want to eliminate new oil drilling permits. And there are always politicians who's on the other side that is for drilling because they don't want to rely on other countries for oil. So it really depends on which side of the party is in office here in the US. The policies that they put in place can highly impact the amount of supplies that each oil company can produce. And also it can fluctuate the price a lot. Because as you may know, like if the demand is higher, if the supply is lower, then in this case the oil can the oil prices will be higher. 
A company that's operating in this sector is Occidental Petroleum, also known as Oxy. They are also one of the biggest players in the Permian Basin. Midstream sector is involved in processing, storage, and transporting oil and natural gas. They typically own processing plants to process petroleum, storage unit to, for storage and transmission pipelines, marine vessels, railroads, truck fleets to transport oil and natural ga gas from point A to point B. The business model for this sector is similar to toll roads, where the clients will pay X amount of fee to transport X amount of oil or natural gas. Since it is fee-based, their income is very dependent on both upstream and downstream. It relies on upstream to produce more oil so they can transport more and relies on consumer demand so they can transfer more to downstream companies. With that being said, the income in this sector is far more stable than upstream since the demand and supply does not fluctuate as much as oil prices. For several companies, especially the large integrated companies, oftentimes the midstream assets are usually grouped or reported as downstream instead of having a standalone midstream segment. One of the largest companies in this sector is Energy Transfer. They own approximately 90,000 miles of pipeline to transmit natural gas and crude oil. Downstream sector is also known as refining and marketing. It is primarily involved in refining, marketing, transporting, and retailing finished petroleum products, such as gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, natural gas, and other petroleum products to wholesale to end customers. The downstream sector in oil gas industry also encompasses other products, such as petrochemicals, lubricants, and other businesses. An example of a company that's operating in this sector is Sunoco. This is all I have for today. I hope you find the content useful. If you want to learn more on oil and gas industry, please subscribe to my channel. I will have more videos coming out covering the topic. I also like to recommend you this book called Petroleum Refining and Marketing. It is available on Amazon. I have the link pasted below in the description for you. Please use the link below to buy it if you're interested. I do get a small commission out of that, so it will help me a lot. In addition to that, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or topics that you would like me to go over in my future videos. Last but not least, please like this video using the like button below if you find the content useful and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.